Happy weekend to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. You know what time it is. It's time to track the tropics. We've been telling you all hurricane season long that by the time we get to mid to late August and especially September, things will likely start to heat up and that's exactly what is going on. We have our very first hurricane of the season this weekend for the Atlantic Basin. What hurricane are we talking about? Well, that is Hurricane Aaron. Hurricane Aaron is currently a very powerful and dangerous Category 5 hurricane just northeast of Puerto Rico. It is expected to stay away from the U.S., so that's great news, but there will still be impacts. We're talking about the potential for some much bigger waves, a high rip current risk, some beach erosion, of course, the chance for some heavy downpours, but overall it looks like it is going to be the bigger wave heights that will be the main issue. Tropical storm force winds could also start to impact Bermuda by Tuesday afternoon and evening and all the way through Wednesday. So even though it looks like this hurricane will track away from the U.S. and it's not going to make a direct landfall for Bermuda, there will still be some impacts. So definitely something to watch as we go through this upcoming week. Now, let's talk about just how quickly Aaron intensified. Friday, Aaron did strengthen to a Category 1 hurricane. That was just yesterday. One day later, we're talking about from a Category 1 to a Category 5. Category 3 is considered a major hurricane, so this is as bad as it gets. Category 5, that is pretty catastrophic if it were to make landfall. So when we're talking about rapid intensification, what do we mean? Well, it's an increase in max sustained winds of at least 35 miles per hour in 24 hours or less. And we did have that happen with Aaron. So Aaron became a Category 1 hurricane Friday morning. As I told you right now, it is a catastrophic Category 5 hurricane the very next day. So what led to that rapid intensification? Well, Aaron really started to move over some very warm waters in the Atlantic and the shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere was really low. So that led to an environment that allowed Aaron to just flourish out there. And it's a monster of a hurricane. You can see a well-defined eye here and it is pushing just to the northeast of Puerto Rico. So notice there will be some impacts to Puerto Rico, some heavy downpours, some gusty wind, likely the threat for some rip current, some bigger waves, but at least it is not going to be uh, actual landfall. So that is some good news. Here's the latest with Hurricane Aaron. Maximum sustained winds all the way up to 160 miles per hour. So like I said, this is about as bad as it gets when we're talking about a Category 5. On the Saffir Simpson scale, you go from Category 1 to Category 5. And of course, this is the worst. There's San Juan, Puerto Rico. It is going to pass just to the north of the island of Puerto Rico. It's going to start to curve to the northwest over the next day or so. That will start to kick it away from the east coast of the U.S. It should stay east of the U.S. and west of Bermuda, but it is going to remain very powerful. Likely still a Category 4 by Wednesday morning and then down to a Category 2 as it passes a little bit past Bermuda by Thursday morning. So the good news with this overall is that this could have been a whole lot worse. A major hurricane slamming into the east coast of the U.S. That would have been worst case scenario, but it is going to stay away from the U.S. But we still have to talk about the potential impacts like the rip currents and the threat for those big waves along the coast. So there will still be some impacts. Let's track it for you. Our GFS future cast showing a very powerful hurricane by Sunday evening, close to 8 p.m. Still just north of Puerto Rico, starting to make that curve to the northwest and then to the north as we go through Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. It is gonna be east of the Carolinas likely by Wednesday evening west of Bermuda and then it is going to start to push northeast away from the U.S. and away from Canada as it moves into cooler water towards the end of the week. It should start to weaken and lose those tropical characteristics, but it is a fairly impressive looking system and there will still be impacts even though it's not going to make an actual landfall in the U.S. or in Bermuda. So here's one of those impacts. These are the future wave heights. We're talking about big time waves showing up with Hurricane Aaron as we go through the week. Notice wave heights for parts of the Florida coast, parts of the Carolina coast approaching 10 feet at times, even more than 10 feet. Notice 
15 to 17 feet for parts of the Carolina coast by Wednesday and Thursday. So that is going to be a huge impact. Another impact, of course, the threat for rip currents. Of course, that's the strong but narrow current that can quickly pull you away from shore. And this has caused several fatalities over the years. So rip currents, nothing to play with. So really not the best beach time for many parts of the East Coast with Aaron passing by this week. So we'll continue to track Aaron, but overall, at least we're not talking about a direct landfall for anyone at this time. What else is lingering out there across the tropics? So we have one other system that we're monitoring. This is a little disturbance off of the Carolina coast, only a very low 10% shot for this one to develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm. And I think over the next few days, conditions kind of become unfavorable for any additional development. So. Really, Aaron is the main thing that we are tracking and watching out there, but we're getting closer to the end of August, closer to the beginning of September, and this is typically where we have the most action for the Atlantic Basin hurricane season. One reason we're expecting more activity to develop where we're seeing more breaks in that thick Saharan dust. So you see the dark brown as we go through the next week. Yes, that's the thicker dust, but notice there are some areas of lighter brown where we don't have as much dust, and that will allow these tropical systems to kind of pop up and thrive without all of that thick, dusty, dry air. So that is one reason why we're expecting the activity to kind of ramp up over the coming weeks. Also, water temps in the Gulf, in the Atlantic, in the Caribbean have been super warm all season long, and that still remains the case. So if we can get a storm going, we've got plenty of that steamy water out there, sea surface temps in the 80s to fuel these tropical systems. So even though we don't have anything heading towards the Texas Gulf Coast or towards the Florida coast, there is going to be the opportunity for more development through the rest of August. Highest threat will be the central Atlantic, but there's a pretty high chance as well for the western Atlantic and an above average threat for the Gulf. Of course, September, historically the most active period of our hurricane season. And you see, we've got really a shot for tropical development everywhere, but the absolute biggest chance will be the Western Atlantic, closer to the East Coast, Central Atlantic, and even a higher chance, a likely chance in the Gulf. So we got a lot to watch, a lot to monitor over the next few weeks and the next few months. Of course, we are not out of the woods until the end of November. And notice the peak of hurricane season right around September 10th. So we got a ways to go, but while things are quiet, this is the time where you can check to make sure you have proper insurance coverage. Make sure you have those papers protected just in case your home gets flooded and make sure you have any other hurricane gear that you might need to keep you and your family safe. Well, that would do it for your tropical update for today. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and hopefully we can keep things quiet in the Gulf for another week or so. It looks like we will, but of course, if anything pops up, you will be the first to know. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. Take care.